Now, the key difference between NIV and IV is just the interface. Uh, what do you use to actually give gas to the patient, the mixed gas to the patient? In an invasive, the, mist, uh, the mixed gas is going through an ET tube. And in, uh, in non-invasive ventilation, it is going through a mask. Now, uh, some of the objectives of our session of the next 15 minutes are to examine the anatomy of a single limb circuit because most of the dedicated non-invasive ventilators have a single limb circuit, but that does not mean that our invasive ventilators that have NIV mode, we cannot do NIV using a dual limb. Also, how do we identify the appropriate mask? How do we recognize and correct the problems that can affect the patients on a mask in NIV? And how do we get the best patient comfort for NIV? Going further, now, these are some pictures of some of the non-invasive ventilator circuits. Most of the dedicated non-invasive ventilators, as I said, have a single limb circuit. The single limb circuit will uh, on one end be connected to the equipment, the other end onto the mask and uh, the exhalation wall. Some of the masks have an exhalation wall that is built in, uh, so you exhale into the atmosphere. In an, in an invasive ventilator, when you have a dual limb, so you have a standard exhalation where the patient also breathes out into the machine and not into the atmosphere. During NIV, you can also use a humidifier circuit. And uh, I've shown you the construction of the humidifier circuit. It's basically from the equipment into the inlet port of the humidifier and from the outlet port into the mask. Going forward, you have three very key uh, kinds of masks. You have a full face mask, you have an oral nasal mask, and you have a nasal mask. You also have a few other kinds of masks that we use for OSA, like your nasal pillows. But in our ICUs and step down units, these are the masks that we use most often. Uh, if you look at a full face mask, the full face mask actually covers from your eyes down to your chin. Your oral nasal masks cover from the top of your nose to your chin. And a nasal mask, as the name suggests, is actually uh, just your nose. And when I spoke about the standard elbow, any standard elbow, if you're able to see my cursor here. So this is a mask with a stand with, a, with an elbow that is used for an invasive ventilator. This is, a, is an elbow that is used for a dedicated non-invasive where the exhalation port is built here and the patient can actually breathe out from here. So I will pause here for any questions on the elbows because the elbows are important. Many a times when we are buying the masks, uh, we need to ask for a specific elbow based on whether you're doing an invasive, you're doing non-invasive using an invasive ventilator or you're doing non-invasive on a standalone non-invasive equipment. If no questions, I'll go for, I'll go further. Now, what are the considerations that we use when we are selecting a mask? What is the patient presentation? Is the patient acute? Is the patient a bit stable? What is the facial configuration? Is there any coexisting condition of the skin? What is the estimated length of the NIV use? And what is, as I said, the compatible with the NIV device? You can't use a blue color standard elbow with a standalone non-invasive equipment because then the patient is not able to breathe out and he's rebreathing whatever he breathes out. The other thing which is important is uh, for the complete face mask, if there is a need for an immediate ventilation, if you can, if you, if your requirement is easy and rapid installation, or if you have a patient who is a mouth breather, or if there are any facial abnormalities or nasal breath sores, then maybe a full face mask is something that could be helpful. Any questions on this? Let me go further. Now, in a, non, in a complete full face mask, as I spoke about, you have two kinds of exhalation ports. One is an EE port, which is an exhalation elbow. And the other is called an SE which is a standard elbow. So here, the patient can actually exhale out from here. And here, the patient exhales out into the equipment with a dual link circuit. Now, uh, where all do we use a oral nasal mask? 
the indications for an oral nasal mask are basically acute respiratory failure if you have a patient who is a partial mouth breather if you have a patient who is anxious if you have an nm patient who is on whom you are going to use a ventilator for a long a period of time in those kind of patients you would actually use a oral nasal mask you have a mask which has a head support you have a mask which is a standard oral nasal mask now all the masks come with a mask fitting guide excuse me i think i have a small cough uh, all the masks have actually a mask fitting guide and they have the indicators that you use to actually choose the right kind of mask for the patient now all masks come in three standard sizes small medium and large so you see the indicators here 1 2 and 3 so you actually match these mask guides with these the one which is the nasal bridge the two which is your uh, nostrils and three which is under your uh, lips whatever fits the patient best open that kind of a mask only now some of the uh, tips that a lot of rts use in an icu is they keep a variety of masks so that if the patient is uncomfortable with one they can immediately switch on to the other because one of the largest risks of non invasive ventilation failure is that the mask is not comfortable for the patient now uh, how do you actually start off this the to install the mask you look at the right size you prepare the mask for the patient fitting you already set the straps for the maximum position but do not uh, do not actually fasten the strap the strap the bottom straps are always looser per put you actually then fit the mask on the head you have the head support properly placed then you first tighten the head and then appropriately tighten the uh, lower straps ask the patient if the mask is fitting properly start the ventilator so that the patient is getting sufficient breath while the mask is being put on this will also help you judge if there are any leaks Now, some of the small thumb rules that we rts use in uh, the icu to check if the mask is right is we try and put a finger under the under the uh, under the silicon and if you see that it is either too tight or too loose then the mask has not fit in properly so it should be adequately tight not too tight that makes the patient uncomfortable not too loose that you have a lot of leak uh in most of the invasive ventilators that don't know how to understand leaks what happens with if the mask is not properly put is that the machine thinks that the leak is a trigger and starts to auto cycle so there is always a, a equipment patient uh, dyssynchrony and the patient may feel uncomfortable on the non invasive the uh, dedicated non invasive ventilators know how to accept a leak and they actually then uh, factor in the leak and uh, but even then if the leak goes above 25 to 30 lpm the patient is going to feel uncomfortable the uh, indications of non invasive or the goals of non invasive ventilation would not be met for such patients now i would also look at a small uh, kind of a graphic that helps you uh judge whether the mask has been fit right or wrong if the mask is actually tightened on the top you will see that the mask is going to get loose on the bottom so it will not be on its on its uh, on its vertical axis it will actually be a bit skew of the vertical axis and there will be a lot of leak from the nasal area or the mouth area similarly if the uh, forehead is not too tight but the chin straps are too tight then you will see the gas leaking into the eyes you will see the patient's eyes dry out you see the patient's getting uncomfortable and they try and pull the mask out i mean the fact to remember here is in a non invasive ventilation the patient is spontaneously breathing we have not completely paralyzed and sedated the patient so the patient has a choice of actually pulling off the mask unlike in an invasive where you paralyzed and sedated the patient so the success of non invasive ventilation other than having a good equipment with the modes other than having a good uh, caregiver 
it's also a good mask and the right amount of mask fitting there is a question here saying what kind of masks do you advise in a covid patients why nrbm is preferred in covid 19 now again i mean uh, we have looked at the indications of uh, the kind of masks required i don't think there is anything specific on what kind of mask there are certain philosophies that if you use a uh, a mask without a filter at the exhalation port, there is a chance that when the patient is breathing out, because the patient is breathing out into the atmosphere, there is a chance of aerosolization of the area around the patient and the risk of cross infection. So there is a, there is one path of, uh, of treatment which says that it is best to use an invasive ventilator uh, with a non-invasive mode using a dual limb where you can actually breathe into the machine and you have the exhalation filter and the exhalation uh, filter takes care of the virus. But also we have to understand that there is a, uh, there is a possibility of using uh, the same exhalation filter on a port on a mask, even in a non-invasive uh, ventilation. So my experience is most of the patients uh, today in Indian ICUs a oral nasal mask is most used. I hope that answers your question.